Hello, I'm Michael Briggs. I'm a local historian who collects and researches the people that made the Jamestown rifles. You're here today to look at the nine schools of long rifles in North Carolina. What we're going to focus on in my segment is the Jamestown School. Uh, rifle making in Guilford County started back in the 1770s and the early gunsmiths worked in what we now today as collectors call the early Deep River School style. The Jamestown School style started around 1810. The first three identifiable gunsmiths that we have that worked here and that developed that school were Thaddeus Gardner, Kraft Jackson, and David Gross. Um, Thaddeus was born here in Guilford County in 1774. He would have been 21 in, in 1795. He had a gun shop on what was then the Salisbury Road. Today we call it Gallimore Dairy Road. And he worked there up until 1851 and was a very prolific maker of long rifles at that site. Uh, David Gross's gun shop was located on what is today Friendly Road. Uh, right next door to New Garden Friends uh, Church and Graveyard. And uh, he had a water-powered barrel mill on Horsepin Creek, and he worked there from 1806 to 1821. And Kraft Jackson's gun shop was located on Deep River where the Jamestown Golf Course and High Point City Lake are now located. Um, so those men each brought on apprentices uh, and family members and slowly over the years the school grew and by uh, 1840 we have 40 some gun shops operating in the area that is today between what is today Jamestown and the airport. Uh, up and down Guilford College Road, up and down Deep River, uh, over in the Adams Farm area uh, off of Bull Run Creek and uh, so we have eventually 88 men that worked making long rifles in Guilford County between 1800 and 1902. Uh, the last gun shop belonged to S.H. Ward. Uh, his, gun, his last gun shop was uh, closed in 1902 and it was on Friendly Avenue. This is one of the earliest known Jamestown rifles. This gun was made and is signed by Thaddeus Gardner. It has his initials TG on top of the barrel. Uh, it's kind of one of the earliest prototype Jamestown rifles. It has a very thin stock with a high cone. Uh, we have an incised carved line up here. We have a brass patch box with what we call the twisted star pattern. Uh, the patch box release on this gun, you push in on the toe plate and that opens the door uh, like that. Uh, that's something that you would see later on most of the Jamestown School, especially if they have a patch box, that's how you're gonna open the door. Uh, we have a, a very early style Jamestown trigger guard. Uh, this gun is full stock, it's an original flintlock rifle, has a Jamestown style double set triggers on it. Uh, another nice thing about this rifle is it's, it's the earliest known Jamestown rifle with a interrupted or broken style forestock molding. There's a, a molding along the forestock, and on this particular rifle, it stops and starts around the thimbles, and it stops here and starts there again. Uh, so that's something that we see from the Jamestown school. Uh, this gun has a very early um, two screw military style side plate and notice the little pick holder here uh, underneath the cheek rest. So this is uh, the earliest known Thaddeus Gardner rifle and one of the earliest known Jamestowns. The first rifle we looked at was made probably between 1800 and 1810. Now we're gonna look at a rifle that was made between 1825 and 1830, I would think. Uh, this rifle is assigned Jabez Stevens. Uh, his gun shop is now under the lake uh, where Adams Farm is. Uh, this rifle is a very nice uh, Jamestown patch box gun. Again, we have the twisted star design. Uh, Jamestown patch box guns are pretty rare. There are less than 50 of them known, uh, but I would say of those 50, at least 40 have this twisted star design. Again, this one opens by pressing in on the toe plate here at the bottom. Uh, that will open the patch box lid. 
I'll say that. There we go. Like that. Uh, the patch box generally uh, would store uh, cloth patches or grease. Again, we have the high cone here. Uh, this gun has a three screw barrel tank uh, that's, that's long and rounded on the end. That became the pattern and um, uh, over 90% of all Jamestown rifles are going to have that style barrel tank, which is pretty much unique to the Jamestown school. Uh, a gun, again, this gun has the interrupted or broken forestock molding. In this case, it stops and starts around the inlays out on the forestock. Uh, so this is a nice sign, Jabez Stevens, uh, has nice inlays on it. Uh, this is the cheek piece and the pick holder again. This gun actually has a very nice eagle engraved on the box finial up here. Uh, this particular gunsmith did something on almost all of his guns. He put a little bird on his side plate. Uh, some of the collectors call it a running chicken, but it's, this one has, a, has, sure enough, has the chicken here. The first two rifles we looked at were the early full stop flintlock patch box style rifles. But when people think today, collectors think of Jamestown rifles, they mostly think of the half stock percussion guns, which we have here. Uh, that's what they really started mass producing. Uh, there were five gun shops out there producing over a thousand rifles a year. These were shipped uh, all over the United States. Um, so it became one of Guilford County's largest exports. Uh, again, we have over 40 gun shops operating from 1840 up to 1870 and guns being made all the way up to 1900. Uh, the most important gunsmiths during that period were William Lamb, his brother-in-law, Anderson Lamb. There were a number of families involved in the gun making business. Uh, the Lambs, the Ledbetters, the Wards, the Wrights, um, a number of different people that worked out there making these rifles. And uh, they are one of Guilford County's uh, greatest legacies. Um, what you see in most of the Jamestown rifles is, is a again, a high cone, a thin stock, a three screw rounded barrel tang. About 70% of them will have two brass dovetails that hold the front sight of them, uh, but they uh, are, have very generic features that we see, uh, even though it was different gunsmiths working in different shops, they made the same kind of style rifle. The Jamestown School, as I said, became not only the largest in North Carolina, but the entire Southern United States, with 88 gunsmiths that worked here over a 100 year period. Uh, in most cases, they put the other eight schools in North Carolina out of business. Uh, we do have four rifles here made by Henry Ledford, who worked over in Davidson County at the Davidson School. His early rifles looked like Salem rifles, but by 1840, he realized if he was going to stay in business, the public wanted Jamestown, so he would make Jamestowns. So his last two, or two of his later rifles that we have here on the back of the display uh, looked just like Jamestown rifles. So he changed his style just to be able to stay in business. I'm told these gunsmiths were very vain. Uh, one day, William Lamb was out squirrel hunting, and he saw a squirrel up in the tree and the squirrel saw him and looked down and said, uh, is your name Lamb? He said, yes. He said, Captain Billy Lamb. He said, yes. The squirrel said, don't shoot, I'll come down. Thank you.